Tactical Family Channel. Today we're doing another part on our upgrading of our Glock 20 SF and 10mm. So that you guys can see we have no mag in the weapon. The weapon is unloaded. Today we'll be installing the Pyramid Flat Face Trigger. We purchased this from the Glock store and we got the ultimate version of this and I'll show you what's included. Alright, so go ahead opening this up here. As you guys can see right here, we have our, this is our safety plunger. We have the entire trigger assembly, followed by the skeletonized striker. Now, because this is the ultimate kit, it also comes with the pyramid spring kit as well. So it comes with a two pin, I'm sorry, a two pound firing pin spring, plunger spring, and adjustment wrench. It also comes with the pyramid trigger, Competition 3 pound firing pin spring. A pyramid trigger competition 4 pound firing pin spring. A pyramid trigger competition 4.5 pound fi firing pin spring. And it also comes with a 6 pound firing pin spring as well. So it gives you a nice variety option uh, to see what type of um, spring you'd like and what poundage. Also, all these parts are coated in titanium nitrate. In the box, it also includes a pamphlet for some instructions on how to do this. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove the slide from the frame. And the way we do that is we're gonna go ahead and use the slide block lever, which is right here, to do that. There we go. Removing the slide from the frame. So for right now, we're just gonna focus right now on the frame. And we're going to go ahead and set the slide aside. So I have my blue donut here, which I'm going to go ahead and use to uh, catch some pins here, because we're going to remove them. So we're going to need to use some punch pins to do it. I do place some blue tape on the punch pins themselves, just to kind of protect so I don't scrape um, the uh, pins at all. And I couldn't find my uh, soft tipped hammer, so I'm just using a standard hammer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the locking block pin which is this one right here. There we go, that's been removed. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the trigger pin. Sometimes you have to, re, uh, you have to move or adjust here the slide lever stop or what's also known as the slide release. Uh, to get the pin to go because otherwise it can kind of be a bit difficult. There we go. Came right out. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the trigger housing pin. Perfect. So we have all the pins removed. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is just lift up and remove the uh, locking block, which is this part right here. Go ahead and use one of my push pins here to remove it. And it pops right out. Now since we've done that, we're going to go ahead and now remove the uh, lever, the so I'm sorry, the slide stop, let's flip this around here. The slide stop lever, again also known as the slide release, we're just going to lift up and pull. There we go, it's gonna go in there as well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift on the ejector here. We're gonna just lift straight up on it. And as you guys can see, it's automatically just popping up very easy. Uh, no issue whatsoever that I have with doing that. And I have now removed it. Flip it around here so you guys can see. Yes, it is dirty. Um, I did forgot to clean it last time I went shooting. But we'll go ahead and see, as you guys can see right here, this is going to be your trigger housing. This is your trigger bar. And this is going to be your trigger shoe. So here is our new trigger um, house, trigger shoe, and trigger bar we're going to go ahead and place in. Uh, right let's take this out for a second. Right in here, it might be hard to see. You guys can see a hole. That hole is going to line up in the trigger housing pinhole. So can be maybe a little tricky. We just have to make sure we get this in here properly here. 
And then you don't want to force it too hard, but you just kind of want to push gently down and it should go in pretty easy. Um, you should also hear a uh, snap, um, but actually really quickly, there's a snap. As you guys can see, it's the flat face compared to a non-flat face. Let's go ahead and put that back in really quickly here. Again, we're just dropping it in. And there's a snap. And there you guys can go. You guys can see that it has been installed successfully there. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place back in our locking block. Now it may be hard to see in here, but you're going to have to apply some pressure on this to align it with the holes on the frame and the locking block. But definitely kind of hard to you can kind of see. You can see how when I release that, it pops up. So you're going to have to apply a little pressure just so you get that perfect alignment so you can put the pins back through. So the first pin we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and do the locking block pin. I'm able to kind of just push that in, not really having an issue at all. So as you can see, we have the locking block pin in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put back our slide stop or slide release. There we go. And then with both, um, your, with your slide release, uh, with your slide stop slash slide release right here, you're gonna have to kind of uh, push them and adjust them so that you can get the proper alignment that you need. So sometimes that can be a little tricky on finding that perfect harmony. But I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting the uh, trigger pin back in and kind of work my way to the other side here. I know it's out of view, but I gotta do the best viewing that I can here for. There we go. And I was able to, probably hard to see, but I was able to get it in. So push this in just a little bit more for right now. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place back our trigger housing pin. Got that in. Now basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of use the push pin to make sure that these aren't sticking out at all too much on either side. They're kind of in equally. All right, that looks good. Looks like everything is in place and the trigger is working. So that's always a positive thing as well. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the frame here aside. And we're gonna go ahead and move to the slide here and start the next process. All right, so now with our slide here, we're gonna go ahead and remove the guide rod. Set that aside. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the barrel. And set that aside. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the slide cover plate. And the way we're going to do that, push up here on the firing pin. And it's hard to see with the with lighting, but right inside there, you have the spacer sleeve, which uh, you're going to go ahead and we're going to depress so that we can remove the uh, slide cover plate. So let's see the best way to do this here. So I'm going to keep my finger here on the uh, slide cover plate. I'm going to depress on the spacer sleeve, which would then allow me, uh, it might be kind of hard, but you can kind of already see that I started to uh, be able to remove the slide cover plate or back plate. Now when you're doing this, you do want to be careful. 
Um, you want to be sure to capture the spacer sleeve, which typically doesn't go anywhere. I've never had it pop out. But more importantly, you want to um, ensure that the extractor depressure plunger assembly, which is right here, which works with your uh, extractor, that that spring doesn't just launch out. So I typically use my thumb and I continue to push and I have my thumb over, as you guys can see, there's the cover plate and I'm going to release slowly and there you guys can go. You guys can see that we have the, um, the spacer sleeve right here, back up so maybe we can have a little bit more light. And then this one right here is the important one. That's the one that tends to launch. So we want it to make sure that that doesn't launch because uh, it's required for the weapon to operate. So now we're going to go ahead and remove it though. And we're just going to go ahead and pull, pull it right out. And we're going to go ahead and set this aside for right now. So next we're going to go ahead and remove the firing pin assembly and we're just going to push up on it. Which will then allow us just to pull it right out. So you guys can see, there it is. So we're going to set that one aside. And now we need to remove the safety plunger along with the extractor. So we, here's the extractor right here. So we should just be able to push down on the safety plunger here and the extractor should fall out, which you guys just saw that it did. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the safety plunger with the spring, as you guys can see right there. And we're going to go ahead and set these two aside now. And now we just have our frame itself, so we're now going to go ahead and start the process of reassembling it. Alright, so now we have our uh, firing pin assembly here. And we're going to go ahead and insert the uh, spacer sleeve into the um, hole right here in the slide. And then we're going to turn and we're going to get it um, locked into place. Well, kind of locked into place, but it helps hold it in place with the, uh, or capture it with the lug right there. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and we're going to depress the spring here because we need to remove the spring caps. Uh, when you do this, you do want to be careful because uh, they can just kind of pop off or fall off and uh, it's uh, a requirement part that you need and you don't want to have to lose it because then you're going to have to have, you know, the company overnight it to you. So we're going to go ahead and depress here and we're going to move, remove the uh, spring caps. Do the best that I can so you guys can see. I'm going to just pull it down and see if may, hopefully they just kind of fall and separate nice and easy. As you guys can see there's one that fell, then the other that fell. Now I'm going to release the spring up there and go ahead and remove this. And there you guys go. Those are the spring caps that automatically separate. Maybe hard to see. There you guys go. So we'll put these aside for a second. We'll go ahead and remove the spring. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the spacer sleeve, which is right here. And this is our firing pin. All right, so we have our new one here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, put the spacer sleeve around it, back the same way it was on the other one. And I'm going to go ahead and use a three-pound firing spring. And same thing, we're going to use our slide here to help us. We're going to place this back in. I'm going to turn that. And we're going to go ahead and put the spring on. It may be hard to see, and I'm doing this here. There's a lip right here. So you need to pull that spring down past that lip because that's where we're going to put the spring caps. Also, on, you do not want the, um, because the spring caps are two pieces, you don't want the gap at the end of the spring to intersect uh, with the, where the two caps themselves, where the two caps themselves meet because it, uh, the end of that spring could work itself in there. So I'm going to try and get it to be in the center over here so that we won't have that issue or have to even worry about that. Rivers run dry, dust breaths in the air. Two dark days, do you have a tear to spare? Make
to get that in. I did have to adjust the spring a little bit because the end of the spring was close to where the two uh, spring caps meet, but I have it on the side and we have that now completed. Um, my prior is pretty darn hard to see, but um, there we go. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the new uh, safety plunger that we got here along with the spring that it came with. Now because this is a reduced, I think it's a reduced um, weight or, or something, so it doesn't fit as firmly as it does with the original one, but again, it's supposed to be that way. Uh, some people like to just drop the, just drop the slide right on it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and then I'll place it in. And uh, as you guys can see, it is now in there. Now we're gonna get our extractor here. And what we're going to do is we're going to depress the safety plunger down and we're just going to go ahead and drop that right back in as you guys can see literally and I'll drop it out just to show you guys again literally it just drops right in we can release the safety plunger which is now there and the extractor is in place. Now we're going to go ahead and place back in the extractor the pressure plunger assembly right here. We're just gonna place it right back and push it down. And see if you guys can see. As you guys can see, it's right, right there, the silver there. So we have that now in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and place our firing pin assembly back in. And now we can go ahead and put our slide cover plate back. I'm just going to initially start it by getting it in there and then using a punch pin, works is what I find works fine for me, is I'm going to depress the, um, the spacer sleeve, see, which allows me to, sorry, which allowed me to get it more in. Now I'm just going to depress that one there with a smaller punch and then I'll be able to push it on even further, as you guys can see, and then I will get it right in place. And I'm not sure if you guys heard, but there was a click. So now we have the, the slide back together. Now, to get this back on, the, um, the firing pin needs to be in the fired position. The way you do that is you're gonna push down on this safety plunger here, and push forward on the firing pin. And that, as you guys can see, has allowed it to come forward. And that needs to be done. Um, otherwise, the uh, slide will not go back onto the frame. So now we're gonna go ahead and place the barrel back in. Go ahead and place the guide rod back. Now we're going to go ahead and place the slide back onto the frame here. There we go. Let's do it this way. Weapon is in a safe direction and we're going to depress the trigger. Alrighty, so we completed our upgrade here again on our Glock 20 SF. Again, we did the Ultimate Pyramid Flat Face Trigger package from the Glock store, and we went ahead and we went with a three pound spring. And again, there's a close up there on um, what we did today. You guys can see all gold, of course, because that's what we're going with. And so far, everything's coming out wonderful. Now, our next thing to do is obviously take this out and see how that trigger actually works. We'll go shooting here uh, hopefully soon. And we'll have a video up um, letting you guys know how the trigger performed and everything to that effect. The overall process for this installing everything wasn't super bad. Um, if you're a, a beginner, um, really novice with weapons, uh, you probably want to watch some videos, maybe do some other things with the weapon first, more basic stuff just to get used to uh, swapping out stuff on your weapon before you move into something 
a little bit more intense. I wouldn't call it super intense. It's just uh, several steps you got to go through and you want to make sure you're not losing any parts and know what you're doing so that once everything goes back together, uh, you have a functioning weapon. Again, really enjoying doing these things. Uh, there's still some more stuff I believe I'm going to do to the Glock here. Uh, we do have another Glock that we're also going to do stuff to, so we'll have another series on that Glock. Uh, but other than that, I think that's it for today. Thank you everybody for stopping by and checking out this video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And if you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them. You guys have a good day.